the Chevrolet program starring Jack Benny and Frank Black's orchestra. And now Frank Black and his orchestra open the program with I Like Mountain Music. like to receive absolutely free a brand new Chevrolet 6, any model you want? All right, listen to this. Starting tomorrow is a feature of National Drive a Chevrolet Month. One of those big, fine-looking Chevrolet 6s will be given away every day, absolutely free. 30 days, 30 cars, one car awarded every day. All you have to do is to visit any Chevrolet dealer, drive or ride in a Chevrolet car, then write down on the entry blank, which the dealer will furnish, the reason why you like the new Chevrolet 6. Remember, in order to enter the contest, you must visit a Chevrolet dealer, get a demonstration, and obtain an entry blank from him. It doesn't matter how many or how few words you use or what kind of writer you are. The best reasons for liking the new Chevrolet, the best in the opinions of the judges, win the free Chevrolet cars. This opportunity is open to any person in the United States over 18 years of age. And one entry makes you eligible for any of the cars given away from the day you enter throughout the balance of the month. So plan now to go to your Chevrolet dealer tomorrow and enter this contest. Your name may be announced over the radio next Friday night as one of the winners of a new Chevrolet 6. <laughs> And now, Jack Benny. Hello, Optimist. This is Jack Benny, the Earth Galloper, coming to you again with all the late news events through the courtesy of the morning eye-opener, the ice and fizz of the world. These late news dispatches come to you by telegraph, cable, mail, female, and liar. The news service that sees all, says all, and sues all. And am I sorry I started this. The world's latest happening. Let's go, Frank. London, England. American-owned horse wins the Grand National Derby. When asked if he would remain in England, he said, nay, nay. More Derby news. Frank Black had better buy a new hat. That's for the orchestra boys, you know. San Francisco, San Francisco, California. George Bernard Shaw arrives here to plead for wine, beer, and whiskers. During interview, he says he will match his beard against Anheuser's voice. Attaboy, George. I like that one. That was good, yes, sir. Ah, here, Bombay, India. Weather warmer here. Mahatma Gandhi changes from winter to spring clothes. Napkin missing from local restaurants. <laughs> how funny how that boy keeps himself in the headlines. New York, New York. People here donate funds to present President Roosevelt with swimming pools. Ah, they want to keep him wet, eh? <laughs> Special radio message from mid-ocean. Garbo tank, she come back now and is secretly headed for America. Nobody knows it but the Associated Press. She is traveling on a Swedish boat disguised as a Finn and Hattie. Garbo is signed to meet Clark Gable June the 1st. Hollywood, California. Gable starts training with Strangler Lewis. Walla Walla, Washington. Walla Walla. Conditions improving here and town is now running on both names. Jack, Jack, can I read one? Yeah, Mary, go ahead. Uh, Shanghai, China. Jigsaw is very popular here. Everybody is riding around in them. You mean rickshaws, rickshaws. What's that? Okay. Winnipeg, Canada. Spring season starts here with eight feet of snow. Rob and Steam flying around wearing earmuffs. New York, New York. Groundhog comes out of hole on first day of spring. Listens to our program and goes back in again. <laughs> oh, well, you can't please everybody. King Kong, Africa. Missionaries arrive here and find cannibals wilder than ever. 
Howard, what are they wild about? They're wild about the new Chevrolet at $445, the only low price car with a feature, feature no draft ventilation. You said it. NBC Studio, New York. Frank Black and his orchestra will play two tickets to Georgia. Okay, Frank. <laughs> Tickets to Georgia played by Frank Black and his Cotton Club Orchestra. Very good, Frank. Great. Say, Frank, I want to ask you something. You know, after all, I mean, you're a musician. You know music. What do you think? I mean, this is really personal. What do you think of that violin solo I played last Friday on Ladies' Night? You know? Well, uh, Jack, I, uh, I, uh... Oh, you won't talk, eh? <laughs> well, well, do you really want me to tell you the truth? Never mind, Frank. It's a long program. You know, I don't want to go through that. Huh? Really, okay. Well, Jack... What Dad, is it, Mary? What? Uh, here's some fan mail. You got an answer to your ladies' night program last Friday. Oh, yes. You remember, folks, we had the uh, ladies' night. Remember last Friday night? We got some very lovely wires and letters uh, regarding that program. Uh, here's, uh, here's one I'd like to read. Here's a wire from the Ladies' Tea Club in Dunk Center, Ohio. It says, we thought your ladies' night was a complete failure. We sent our husbands out so we could listen into your program, and we weren't even embarrassed. What happened to the farmer's daughter? <laughs> ah, she's an old lady now. Mm, here's a letter. Uh, here's a letter from Omaha, Nebraska, from the Ladies' Bridge Circle. It says, we heard your program last Friday night. You can fool some of the people all of the time, and all of the people some of the time. But this Friday, we're going to bed early. <laughs> oh, well, you can't please everybody. Oh, here's one from a man in Lunch Wagon, Ohio. It says, congratulations on your ladies' night. Did I enjoy you? My wife and I, my wife and I haven't been separated in 20 years. But on your ladies' night, she gave me the night off and $10. And did I enjoy you? <laughs> oh, well, you, you can't, can't please, please everybody. everybody. Thanks, boys. You just heard from the Chevrolet sex set. And now James Melton, our own Jimmy, six feet two, bless his little heart, 
We'll add a little class to this program by singing that popular Irish ballad, Mavis. Thank you, Jack. You're welcome, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Say, Jimmy, uh, before you sing, uh, Jimmy, let me ask you one thing. What did you really think? No, I mean, what did you really think of my violin solo last Friday? You know, I can't get anything out of Frank Black. I mean, tell me the truth, Jimmy. What did you really think of it? Well, now, Jack, if you must know, I think you're a swell fellow. Thanks, but I mean my, I mean my violin, my violin solo, Jimmy. You know. I think you're a gentleman, a scholar. I think you're one of the finest chaps I've I know, ever Jimmy. Met. I mean my you're music. You're a fine though. comedian with a good gift of gas. But Jimmy, I mean, what did you think of my violin? That's what I'm coming to. You've got personality, magnetism, and a fit. But if you can play that fiddle, and my name is Albert Einstein. Thanks, Albert. Sing Einstein. <clears throat> what do they know about music? It's not appreciated. Play, Frank.
That was Albert Einstein singing, or uh, Jimmy Melton singing, maybe. The next week, he will give you his theory on his relatives. And now tonight, folks, just as we forgot to promise you last week, we are going to offer for the big feature of our program a dramatic play. A play of the gay 90s, not the roaring 40s or the bowering 50s, but the gay 90s, when men wore celluloid collars and girls wore five-piece bathing suits. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to give you our version of that famous Mae West picture, He Done Em Wrong. He done them wrong, and we're going to do them right. Now, the action takes place on the Bowery in New York. The Bowery in those days was equivalent to a punch in the nose, a stolen watch, or both. You have no doubt seen this picture in which Mae West plays the part of a lady known as Lou. Lou was a nice girl, and every man who fell in love with her gave her a diamond. She had, uh, she had 13 sweethearts, which gave her a grand slam in diamonds. Now, the uh, members of our program will play the part in this show, and Howard Claney will play the parts of the Chevrolet. That you can be sure of. Mar Mary Livingston will take the part of Lou, while I, Jack Benny, the uh, baddie mode of the air, will play the part of Cummings, Cummings, the mission worker. Our supporting cast includes Mr. Ralph Ash, who will assume the role of Spider, the bartender. Mr. Ash has had many years of stage experience, having been 20 years with the old homestead, 30 years with Avey's Irish Rose, and he will be back in the old homestead after tonight's performance. Our little play will go on immediately after the next number, so pick out a good seat close to your radio. First come, first serve. And now Frank Black will play a brand new number called The Grass is Getting Greener All the Time. And who do you think is going to sing the chorus? Give up? Mary Livingston. Are you nervous, Mary? Uh-huh. Really? Yeah. Well, this is the first time you know she'll ever be heard in song over the air, if she ever was heard, rather. Uh, Mary, what gives you the courage to sing? Huh? I heard you play the violin last week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> what repartee? Play, Frank. <laughs>
was fine, Mary. Yeah, that was fine. Were you nervous? Did yeah. you hear it, Ma? I bet Babe is jealous. Yeah. Ah, that was fine, Mary. Oh, Mary. Miss Livingston to you. Oh, I see. That's the way they are when they get up in the world. Well, now for our play. She done him right. The opening scene takes place in Spider Web Bar Room on the Bowery in the year 1898. You ready, boys? Everything set? All right, Frank. A little curtain. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, Frank. Wait, wait, this is a Mae West play. Wait a minute. Oh, I take it again. Come on, come on, Bob, and have one on the house. What's it going to be? One vanilla punch. I'll have a Tony Frode with a one Tony coming up. Make it a punch. Make mine a banana split straight. <laughs> We got a line. We got a Ah, drunkards. Drunkards, all of them. Yay and verily. Just a lot of forgotten souls. Ah, but they can be saved. Uh, I never did like that snooper. The less I see them around this joint, the better I like it. Who's he, Spider? Why, that's coming. The guy that runs the mission next door. Oh, yeah, well, give me another pineapple crush. And make mine a beer. <laughs> Not till April 7th. <laughs> <laughs> the scene now changes to Miss Lou's dressing room on the third floor. Auntie and Johnny were sweethearts. Da, 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 dee, da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Hello. Hello, says we. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You want to speak to Miss Lou? Yes, sir. She's here. Yes, a minute. I'll call her. Who is it, Belinda? It's that Mr. Cummins from the mission. He wants to speak to you all. Oh, that mission guy, eh? It's about time he's called. Hello, dark and handsome. So you finally decided to call me, eh? Well, what's on your mind, big boy? Listen, hon. Why don't you come up sometime? I say, why don't you come up sometime? You'll be right over? Okay, sugar. So long. Well, come on, take that bucket and bring me my diamond. Miss Lou, you sure is like the Northwest Mountain. You always get your man. <laughs> why, Cylindra, you have your boyfriend too, haven't you? Your famous Amanda. <laughs> How about Kinsey? Sure enough, this is Friday. Did I write that line? <laughs> Who is it? I think it's Spider, Miss Lou. Mm, I must ask why. <laughs> Out. That was me, folks. Mary, stick to your character. <laughs> Hello, Lou. Oh, it's you, Spider. Listen, Lou, I just heard some bad news. Fill it. Your old sweetheart, Chick Anderson, just broke out of the pen, and he's coming here to get you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and he's plenty sore. You should have gone up to see him, Lou. So Chick flew the coupe, eh? Yeah, Chick flew the coupe. And the Chick Cylinder Coupe Chevrolet for four forty-five is the best buy on the market today. Howard, Howard, this play is bad enough. Stay out of it, will you please? I'm just tipping you off to the... be careful, Lou. And let me tell you another thing. There's something screwy about that missionary guy coming... What do you mean? I mean this. He ain't no missionary guy at all. He's a new stick around here. They call the hawk. The hawk? How do you know? Huh. I saw the picture. I was with him, folks. <laughs> He's right. I was with him. We saw the picture. So that's the hawk, eh? Well, leave him to me, Spider. Now, scram. So that missionary guy is the hawk, eh? Oh, well, he can be a pain. Belinda, you can go if you want to. Thank you, Miss Lou, because I've got to take my little brother to the doctor. He ain't feeling so good. What's the matter? Is he sick, Belinda? Yes, sir. And the Chevrolet is the best sick Belinda car in the low price field. <laughs> uh, thanks, Belinda. Here's your dollar. Hey, if you need me next week, I can do Irish, too. Beat it, will you? Please. <laughs> I wonder what's keeping that guy coming. What can it be? I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. My head and bended low. Come in. Wait till I knock on the door. Oh. 
Come in. Hello, dark and handsome. Hello, sweet and careless. <laughs> Sit down, big boy. I was afraid you weren't coming up. How'd you get away from the mission? I was missing you, Lou. <laughs> I tried to stay away, but I couldn't. Oh, yeah? It's the truth, Lou. I can't sleep. I don't eat. I can't think. I keep trying to forget you, Lou, but I can't. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You're beautiful, Lou. Your hair is like the golden sunshine. Your eyes shine like the diamonds on your wrist. And your teeth are like pearls. Of course, pearls' teeth are no bargain either, you know what I mean? <laughs> ah, kiss me, Lou. Kiss me. Take it easy, Blackfoot. Now get this and get this straight. You ain't putting nothing over on me. You ain't bringing me bracelets. You're bringing me handcuffs. And they ain't no good to me because I sing with gestures. Well, I'm gesture gigolo. Gesture gigolo. Me singing, folks. I'm wise to you, big boy. You're the hawk. Yes, I'm the hawk. Well, then hawk these diamonds. I got to get out of town before Chick gets here. Who is that? Blue, blue, blue. Chick is on his way up here and he's toting a gun. You better beat it. You better get out of here, Tommy, because Chick hates you, too. He'll kill both of us. No, Lou, no, I can't leave you alone. I'm going to stay here and protect you. Don't worry about me. I can handle him. Quick, hide in that closet. All right. Goodbye, Lou. So long, handsome. Come up again. I'm in Lou's closet now, folks. Huh? Oh, uh, hello, Jack. Frank Black, what are you doing here? Well, believe it or not, Kick hates me, too. Oh, maybe, 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 the birds are calling. Jimmy Nelson, what are you doing here? I'm Lou's singing teacher, and Kick hates me, too. My goodness, Kick hates all of us. But he can't hate the Chevrolet 6, the most dependable car Howard on the road. Howard Slaney, hooray! from May West to East Lynn, a play of the South. For the benefit of those who have tuned in late, let me repeat. Starting tomorrow and continuing throughout the month of April as a feature of National Drive a Chevrolet Month, a brand new Chevrolet 6, America's largest selling motor car, will be given away every day absolutely free. 30 days, 30 cars. One car every day. So if you would like to win a new Chevrolet, visit any Chevrolet dealer. Take a trial drive in a new Chevrolet 6. Find out what it means to ride in a big, comfortable, Fisher body car. A smooth, speedy, responsive fix. Get acquainted with Fisher no-draft ventilation, the starterator, and other new Chevrolet inventions. Then after your ride is over, write down on an official entry blank, which you must get from the Chevrolet dealer, your reasons for liking the new Chevrolet fix. And if you're thinking of buying a new Chevrolet right away, you have all the more reasons for doing so at once. For if you do buy a Chevrolet between now and the end of the contest and then win a free car, you have the option of accepting either a free car or cash equivalent to the free car's retail delivered price. So be sure to see your Chevrolet dealer right away and find out how easy it is to win a new Chevrolet 6. Absolutely free. Uh, Good night, folks. Good night. Listen. <laughs>